Hello everyone! Welcome back again to my channel. So if you are new here, hi, my name is Annie. So our topic for today is about how can we pass the NCLEX exam? How will we study or how can we prepare for the NCLEX exam? So if we will be taking it, we will be able to finish it with a minimum number of questions that are required to pass the exam. So if you are interested in this topic, then keep on watching. Okay, but before anything else, I just would like to tell everyone that what I'm sharing with you today was my own personal experience, um, what I did to pass the NCLEX, and my own personal idea on what can we do so that we can pass the NCLEX, you know. So it doesn't mean that it's what you should do because you have so many options. You have a lot of options on how you would go about to pass the exam. Because we all have different preferences. We have different learning strategies. So what works for me might not work for you or vice versa, you know. So what I'm about to share you is just one of the million, million ways you can do it. Okay, so let's get on straight to the topic. But by the way, just to give you an idea, I took the NCLEX exam way back 2006. So I don't know if there are new other rules that might have changed. But according to my inquiry, um, since October of this year, 2020, there are new guidelines on the NCLEX exam, three of which are the minimum number of questions now is 75, which was I think before was 65. And the maximum number of questions is 145 now which I don't know back then though and the time limit uh, allotted for the NCLEX exam now is five hours which was back then was six hours so it's a little bit shortened nowadays so yep, I will be telling you some tips and tricks on how you can pass at least on the minimum number of questions um, to, t to pass the NCLEX exam, right? So, oh, by the way, for those of you who are not familiar with NCLEX, NCLEX is the National Council Licensure Exam. It is a nationwide exam given for um, the licensing of nurses in the US, um, Canada, and I think Australia. It is to assess the knowledge, the skills, and abilities that are essential for the entry-level nurse to use in order to meet the needs of clients requiring the promotion, maintenance, or restoration of health. So that's from NCSBN, National Council of State Boards of Nursing. Okay, so let's get into the gist of this video. And of course, if you will be preparing for your NCLEX exam, you should at least allot enough time, the length of time for you to study before your exam date. So you could at least study well enough to be able to pass, isn't it? So uh, more time would be preferable, but perhaps one to two months is okay. For me, I think I had one to two months to prepare for the exam and I think that was enough for me actually to study before my um you know before my NCLEX exam so you can lengthen it or shorten it but it all depends on you it all depends on you on how you feel is enough for you to to prepare to study for the exam so as I've said we all have different learning strategies and bases on how we can learn so it all depends on you actually Another thing is, of course, you have to have a study reference or review material. So, of course, we have different uh, ways on how we can best learn. Either you can learn through reading or writing or listening. So, it's all up to you or you can mix everything, you know. Um, but for me, what I did was because my NCLEX exam was sponsored by the agency. So, they sent me a book. An NCLEX, I think NCLEX review book or med search book, I think it was, but it was complete. Oh my gosh, it was thick. I can't remember exactly what was it or who the author was, but that's the only, the sole and only review material I had. Back then, I still don't know, you know, so much about computer, YouTube, references. I don't know. So that only, that book only was my um, study material when I did my preparation for the NCLEX. But another thing is time management, um, especially if you have really limited time to prepare for the exam. And I think the best way you can do this is you allot 
really a specific time for you to study um, whatever is best for you to learn like for me um, I learn best when I study at night when everybody is sleeping and I'm the only one who's awake so <laughs> everything almost everything that I study will be retained so you have to allot a specific time for you to study uh, maybe one or two hours uh, because for me more than that would be overwhelming already it's like I'm just reading something and it's not retaining in my mind so it's up to you it's all up to you who have different paces and strategies as i've said so it's it all depends on you so another trick if you're studying for the NCLEX would be focus more on the areas that are less familiar with you. So for example, you are working in an OB area, an OB department. So you will be less familiar with um, like OR, ED, orthopedics, med surge. So you will focus more on studying on those um, areas. So you will be more adept with some clinical situations in those areas. Um, because of course the NCLEX would tackle all the different, you know, areas of uh, nursing. So you have to focus your study on the areas that you have limited, you know, limited knowledge on. Okay, so now I will be sharing you some simple but proven effective tips and tricks in answering NCLEX exam questions. And on top of that list would be prioritization. I think most of us or all of us nurses know that in prioritizing clinical situations, we have to think of the ABCs, which stands for airway, breathing, and circulation. And um, as you may have guessed or know, those are the most, you know, the top priorities in answering nursing exams, not just the NCLEX, but um, whatever nursing exams there are. So just think of the ABCs when you're answering your NCLEX exams. Um, is the airway patent? Are there any uh, foreign objects blocking the patients to breathe? Is the uh, is the breathing regular and normal? Is there a palpable pulse for the patients? Is there a blood pressure? You know, those kinds of stuff. So, of course, apart from that, you have to think of the vital signs. Um, the heart rate, of course, the temperature, the blood pressure, the respirations. You have to think of those. And next would be the critical labs. Of course, you have to think of the critical lab results of for the patient before you know you can finalize your answer in those um, NCLEX exam questions. Okay so the next thing is of course you have to think about the safety of the patient. So you might as well be thinking about urgent versus non-urgent like what are the things you have to do now or the things that you can do later that will help the patient or some actual versus uh, potential, you know, some actual problems that the patient is having now and any potential problems that might occur due to your, um, you know, interventions or whatever is happening to the patient. And of course, some questions you have to analyze if what it's asking is about your first action to take or your best action to take. For example, if a question is a situation where there is a patient coding or somebody in cardiac arrest, if the question is asking your first action to take, you have to think of your BLS. But if the question is asking your best action to take, for example, the choices will be perform CPR, call and inform the doctor, or go to the go back to the nurse's station and look for somebody to help you so of course your best action would be perform cpr right so it all depends on the the question on what the question is asking for either it be your first action to take or your best action to take so you have to consider that in answering those nclex exams Okay, so last but not the least, always, always remember that there will never ever be an answer um, that is do nothing. Of course, in nursing, there will never be a situation where we can do nothing at all. 
even if the situation is like the patient is stable walkie-talkie vital signs are normal um, labs are normal abc's is perfect of course there will always be a, another thing that you can do for the patient there will always be something that you can do for the patient so, so there will never be an answer of do nothing um, on the NCLEX exam or even any other exams for nurses. Okay, so that's it for today's video and I hope you learned something or you have gained something on this video and if you did, please don't forget to hit that like, share and of course that subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed and thank you, thank you again once again guys for watching and see you again on my next video. Bye-bye!